Katie Hunter from MA UK. I'm here with Mr. Bag and Tag, Nathan Jones. How you Love doing? your hat, Nathan. Oh, thank you. I've got a rep, you know. <laughs> I'm actually wearing my Bag and Tag t-shirt. You <laughs> in. I think you need a new one. <laughs> I do need a new one. I'll see you out. Don't at worry. The moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> So Nathan, you're fighting at Cage Warriors in London on the 20th, just coming up in a couple of weeks now. Yeah, you two weeks to, Yeah, you were supposed to be fighting Hackham Foss. What, what happened there? Uh, I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, just got told uh, he was out of the fight, so gutted. But at the same time, we got a, got a suitable replacement, so I can't complain there, you know. It's got to go with the flow, and my job's to fight who's in front of me, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, so now you're fighting David Bear. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that much about him. I saw him fight at Brave. So he's a French man. He's eight and one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about him either, but I don't really need to, other than the fact that um, he, he he's, he's game to fight. You know, he's, he's uh, French is, uh, France is number six, so he's a top seed. Um, and I'm what? I'm, I'm number 13, uh, UK number 13. So again, uh, top C. So I'm ready to, to get it. It's going to be a good European world weight clash. Um, like I said, a suitable a suitable opponent on paper. You put us two together and it's going to be interesting. You'll pay your money to see it. So that's what it's about. Uh, I'm ready and I'm excited. Tell, tell me how it works. So when Hakan Foss, when you found out that he wasn't able to fight anymore, presumably he's injured, like, do Cage Warriors offer you, like, a number of opponents or, do, like, do you just accept anyone? What's your thought process for... Because he's obviously quite different in terms of where he is in his career and his style and everything to Hakan. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got a manager. I'm represented by Elite MMA Agency, Chris Fig. Um experienced and well respected uh, in in the fight game you know that's uk european worldwide you know what i mean um so that's that so it all goes through him because uh, my job's to train <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah. that's what i want to do is train uh, and we look at where i'm at in my career where i need to go you know i've been i've been doing this for a while this will be my um 23rd professional fight do you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm a vet in that in that sense. Uh, it's got to, the fight's got to make sense. Um, so you can throw whoever at me, but the fight has to make sense. Um, we've got you know whether we're both going in the same direction. Uh, I don't want to take a back step, onwards and upwards. So just this guy David Bay is a top fighter, and um, I'm ready to get that W and leapfrog that position and get my name back in that mix. You know, there's a yeah. vacant world weight title and, hey, you know what I mean? Who knows, man? Yeah. It's been a while since we've seen you in the cage as well. Has it been about a year since we've mm. seen you? Yeah, it's been a year. Like, um, a year, that's due to, to commitment, uh, family commitments, travel commitments. It's, it's down to, to injury as well. Um, just hasn't quite worked out. I was due to fight and then I wasn't and then I was. I had to pull out this and that. But I'm back now and, yeah, I've got a new lease of life, man. 2020 is the year. 2020 is that vision. Yeah. I'm really, I'm good to go, man. So you're on the second Cage Warriors fight, uh, sorry, fight card of the year. How many fights would you like to get in to make up for next year? And obviously, if you've got a vision and you're going somewhere... Well, who knows? I mean, I don't have to make up for anything. Like I said, I've been doing this for a while. This is my 23rd professional fight. Do you know what I mean? 23 uh, professional fights is a, is a lot. You know, you can be um, as active as you want, but it's that, that, that cage time. And uh, I've paid my dues. Do you know what I mean? I've fought the best of the best, the top ranks, for consistently for a long time now. So uh, I'm happy to do me. At the same time, I've got a life outside of the cage. You know, if if I was paying my bills, all my bills, then yeah, I'll be hungry. I'll be honest, but I'm a, a, a you know I'm a family man. I'm a I'm a I'm a businessman as well, you know. And I've got other responsibilities, other commitments, and I've got to live my life. So I'm taking it yeah. bit by bit, day by day, and yeah, it's time. It's time to represent. And it's time to perform. So 
<laughs> You've been very active on the JIT scene, though. Um, I've seen yes. loads of posts of yours on the podium in the last few months. Like, it looks good, though, doesn't it? Lots of medals. It looks it good. Does look on the good. podium, it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> in the gay, in no gay, you seem to be, you know, like, just really having a lot of success there. Yeah, I mean, I'm a martial artist, first and foremost. You know, I pride myself on being a martial artist. Then I pride myself on being an athlete. Then a fighter, you know. Um, yeah, my profile is being an MMA fighter, but it's about that, the, the martial arts, empowering myself, evolving. Uh, and I'm trying to instill that in what I do. And, you, you know, I've got to walk the walk. If I'm teaching my students, teaching my clients, my young people... I've got to walk that walk and I've got to lead by example and, and, and that's what I'm doing, getting my hands dirty, um, enjoying that process, you know, and it, and it is a process. I'm, I'm always learning and I, and I learn from my mistakes. I've made a lot of them, but at the same time, you've got to put yourself out there and, and that's what I'm doing, whether it's the mat, the ring, the cage, you know, I, I do it all and, uh, and I like that because not everybody's doing this, you know, and I can't emphasise that enough. I'm not scared to, to, to put myself out there. I'm not scared to, to, to put it on the line and to test my skills. You know, in the biggest, the, the bigger the stage, the better. You do know what I mean? Because um, there's more to, more to win that way. You know, he who dares wins. And Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? What can I say? Uh, you caught me at a good time. I'm in a good mood. Normally, I, like, two weeks out, I'm all shriveled up and, like, you know what I mean, <laughs> on this diet tip. But I just had some coffee. <laughs> No, normally I do catch people on the weight cut, and then, <laughs> so I've mm. been really lucky with you. <laughs> yeah, you got me on a good day. But, you know, I like you, Katie. You're going to get another T-shirt, so it's all good. <laughs> I'm still going to rep this one. For yeah, long hey, time. go on. <laughs> so, as you said, the the um, welterweight title is vacant because, obviously, Ross Houston has, has left Cage Warriors. Yes. Um. What do you think of Reese McKay fighting for the belt? And who do you think he'll be fighting? Uh, I mean, look, Reese McKay, yeah, uh, he's worthy for, uh, uh, to fight for the belt. You know, he's a former world champion himself. However, we're talking about the welterweight division. And correct me if I'm wrong, I just saw him have one fight at welterweight. Um, Hakan Foss. Uh, so there's other guys that, that are out there. I'm not saying he's not worthy for it, uh, ready to fight for it, but there are other guys in the mix. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I personally would have liked to have seen someone like Adam Proctor go uh, fight for it first. Maybe he'll fight Adam Proctor. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm not he could the well fight the winner of that fight because obviously Adam Proctor's fighting this Saturday, isn't he? Mm, so. Yeah, no, exactly. So, look, I'm not the matchmaker. I don't know how uh, that side of things works and I don't really care because my job's to train. Um, I just beat who's in front of me and then, yeah, uh, I handle business. But... You, you know, world weight division in Cage Warriors is stacked. There are some yeah. really tough fights. There's actually, I can't think of, of an easy fight. Uh, all I know is I'm on a two fight win streak. I'm fine in two weeks. Get that free. Um, and then, th then my name is in the mix without a doubt. So uh, I'm confident. I'm in good spirits. And I'm ready to go. You're feeling like 2020 is going to be your year. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I've uh, put too much in this to, to only uh, finish halfway. You know what I mean? That finish line is in sight. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm in a good place in my life. I'm in a good place within my career. Um, this is the run now. If I'm going to do it, it's going to be now. I don't need to have um, full sense of security taking PEDs. I don't need to you know, uh, have a full sense of security, taking easy fights, fights that I know I'm going to win. This is a sport. Um, at the same time, you know, it's business and I'm going to take care of business. I'm ready to take care of business. So I feel good, man. You sound super motivated. Yeah, well, it's an interview, so I've got to... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you just can turn off the camera yeah. and be like, Ugh. All the other fighters, <laughs> yeah, I feel good. I'm going to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what these guys are like. Yeah, no, I'm not saying any names and no disrespect to the guys, but you know, what I mean, I've got to let my personality show. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nice guy at the end of the day, you know. Um, but before that, I'm an athlete. 
martial artist and fighter. So, mm, next question. <laughs> okay, this is a bit of a, a curveball. I keep hearing rumours that the UFC in London might get cancelled due to the coronavirus and people not being able to fly in. Well, what do you think about the potential for Cage Warriors to be cancelled after everyone's put in so much hard work? You know what? I'm a man of po of integrity and positive energy, so I'm trying not to think about that. I'm visualising the win. I've put work in. You know, um, I fight for free, but I get paid to make weight, and I'm making weight, so I want to get paid regardless of what happens. I need to get paid. Um First and foremost, second of all, uh, if people can't fly in, hey, I'm a world away. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going to make the way. Holler at me. There must be someone in the UK that will step up. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Obviously, I don't want to step on people's toes. I've got, I've got to take care of business first and foremost. Uh, and, and that's what I've signed a contract, and that's what I'm going to do. That's my priority. But we can only speculate what could happen, what ifs. Stranger things have happened in, in the past, so I'm not ruling anything out. Obviously, it would be a, a travesty if events got cancelled because oh, people make yeah. plans. Not just the fighters, not people just behind the scenes, but the, the, the crowd, the people that, you know, pay their good, hard-earned money to, to, to support us as fighters, but to support the sport, you know? So um, I wouldn't want people to be inconvenienced by other things that are happening with, uh, that's outside of our control, you know? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, yeah, it's a it's a horrendous thing for the the people who are directly affected. But um, yeah, I really hope it doesn't come to that at all. Like, yeah. I feel like we've waited so long for the domestic scene to get going this year. Like, there's been nothing really in January and February, and it's all yeah. about to ramp up in March. So I'm just like, I'm so desperate to get to my first Cage Warriors event of the year. It's a not, cracking not long to part. Wait, not long to wait. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think it is of a the stack rest card. Of the card? Yeah, it is a stack card from top to bottom. You know, it's a stack card when you see see my name on the prelims, and that's not me being big headed. But no, I've thought that about everyone on the prelims. Facts is facts. If I'm on the prelims at, on Cage Warriors, where I've had so many fights, then you know the card is stacked, uh, and that's just testament to to the talent Cage Warriors can bring in. That's testament to the talent that that people are bringing to the table. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, if I'm early on in the show, that's cool. It means I can enjoy the fights. I get my my, my stuff done. I'm going to enjoy the fights. I raise a glass and, you know what I mean, celebrate that W. But, um, yeah, hey, it's just, people are in for a treat. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be a bit biased because I'm on a car. But the rest of the card, is, you know, there's some, some, some decent matchups there. Um, styles make fights and some, some yeah. tasty, tasty talent to, to look out for. So... Guys, if you haven't got a ticket because it's sold out, Fight Pass. Yeah, UFC Fight Pass, everyone. It's, it's just, I think Ian Dean is an amazing matchmaker. I know everybody says it a lot, but like, he, he is just, he really does put on the fights that everyone wants to see. And it's not that easy. I know it's not that easy. I've watched Brad Pickett. Um, do it for um, Rock and obviously yeah. he's a great, great matchmaker as well but I know how what a struggle it can be as well trying to get the people you want to fight each other but once you have had your fight who are you most looking forward to watching? Ah, uh, uh, To be fair <laughs> I, I, what I need to do is just give my, my missus a, a big kiss and a cuddle do you know what I mean? That's, that's all I need to do um, she's, yeah, she's been she's been a good good rock for me that 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 I need in in, in this time. Uh, so I don't really care. <laughs> I just want to see my girl. But at the same time, uh, thank and, and uh, all the other people that are there to support me and and, and have a drink with them and and stuff. Um, but yeah, there, there's some really some really nice guys, um, really good athletes on the card. Uh, but yeah, in my eyes, I'm the main event. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you got to look at it. <laughs> and what about, can we expect to see you back on Polaris and Battle Grapple and things like mm, that this year? Yeah, man. Um, one of my goals of 2020 is to get my uh, Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Um, so with that, I've got to grind and I've got to grind hard. And there's no 
better place to do that than on a stage with the best grapplers in the world. So yeah, you will see me on on these stages uh, very very soon. Um, but I like to mix it, like like I was saying before, um, with the best. You know what I mean? And especially yeah. competing on in different uh, disciplines against people that that's what they focus on. That's only going to sharpen my skills, make me a better athlete, make me a better martial artist. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, you you will see me on the uh, submission grappling scene very very shortly after. But at the same time, we have to see how how impressively I finish this fight. Uh, and I have to see what opportunities come my way uh, with regards to MMA. But, you know, I'm open to interpretation and I'm open to, to suggestion. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Have you got any advice for this lowly blue belt on how she can improve this year? <laughs> yeah, I do. Just keep turning up. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. It doesn't matter what, like, this is what I say to, to, to all my guys. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what kind of day you have, a good day, a bad day, whatever, however you're feeling. You bow to go onto the mat and then you've got a clean slate. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And whatever you have in that session, whether it's a good session, bad session, because you will have times like that, you bow to finish, you get on with your day and you're always getting better. No doubt. Yeah? Yeah. Always getting better. Uh, I have days where I doubt myself. I have days where I underperform. I have days where I forget things, but I've always got to put into context who I'm sparring, how much I've been training, um, what I'm doing, what was I trying to do? Was I experimenting? There's all these different variable factors that you got to consider and just take it with a pinch of salt. Do, do you know what I mean? And yeah, this is what it's about. We're all getting better. Um, so yeah, just taking a shot, keep turning up and yeah, that, that blue will turn soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> it. It, might, it might be a bit longer than soon, but... <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, it's going to happen. You know what I mean? It's going to happen eventually, so just keep how, at it. How long has it taken you to get to where you are, Nathan? How, how long have you been involved in all martial arts? Uh, for about 10 years now. So um, the end of this year will be 10 years. Uh, so... Uh, I just started off from scratch, literally walk, walked off the street, <laughs> off the street. You know what I mean? Just started. That was ten years ago, and what and turned when did into you start in? Uh, just MMA. I was like, oh yeah, oh wow, oh, just in fitness and self defense. You know, and then one thing led to another. It turned on, turned into trying to activate a new activity, to turn into a hobby, turning into uh, a habit, into a way of life. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, like, it is a way of life for me, and uh, I don't know what I'll do without it. it. Martial arts has given me a new sense of energy, and um, it's a tool, a tool for me to to communicate, a tool for me to uh, get over whatever trials and tribulations I had, and a tool for me to pass on. Do you know what I mean? And, and that is my mission. I know you didn't ask that question, but... I'm letting you know, yeah, that's my mission. Um, it's, the, it's a tool uh, to pass on the message. So, 10 years, I love that. Of, 10 years, 10 years at the end of the year. So, yeah, fingers crossed. My goal, I'm going to keep grinding. And, uh, yeah, who knows where, where, where the wind blows. Yeah, that's amazing to see what you can achieve in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, nothing else in my life have I persisted with for as long as I have. And, you know, had I done it when I was a, was a younger, younger, I'd done little activities here, this and that, here, there, and whatever. Quit them as uh, my first opportunity. Even though my mum made me do it, she was like, yeah, you're doing it. I was like, hey, as soon as I, I, I didn't have to do it, I quit. But this, um, I love it, you know. I've met a whole uh, variety of new people um, and, and exposed to different things in life you know i get to travel the world whether yeah. i'm competing whether i'm fighting with um training sorry whether i'm teaching you know uh doesn't matter what language people speak we all know martial arts and we you know, do you know what i mean and yeah and even me just talking about it is it, quite humbling it makes me want to go to the gym now you know but uh i'm i'm, I'm tired so no nah. <laughs> <laughs> i love like when i go away on a business trip with work wherever it is i force myself to like go to a new gym wherever it is whether it's in 
New York or like Minnesota or like really random and weird places everywhere nowadays has got like some kind of MMA or jiu-jitsu school and I get such fear about turning up like and I'm like I'm not good enough to turn up here like oh they're gonna think that I'm too rubbish to join in nobody's gonna want me there but I make myself go and I'm always so pleased that I do go and you just meet so many amazing people that's it that's it you know the hardest thing to do is the first thing to do which is to turn up and do you know what I mean just just keep turning up man so no good on you but I mean like if you were wearing that bag and tag t-shirt then that breaks barriers down oh bag and tag I I don't want them to assume I'm amazing just because I'm wearing the t-shirt you know that is another yeah that is a problem with (laughs) that t-shirt actually yeah So, Nathan, thank you so, so much for your time. I'm so oh, buzzing you. to see you on March 20th. Like, yeah, no, as you said, you. if you're on the prelims, then you know the card is outstanding. I've got teammates on the prelims as well. And, yeah, you know it's going to be an amazing show if you guys no, are on the prelims. For sure, for sure. Um, thank you for having me. Can I just give a shout-out to my team? Of course. All right, yeah. I want to shout-out everybody at Elevate Martial Arts, everybody at uh, Titan. Uh, shout out to Scramble, shout out to Truth um, Naturals, shout out to the Barefoot Movement, uh, Mark Mene, shout out to Rolls and Rehab, uh, Lewis Fenton, Sam King from King Kickboxing, uh, I hope I'm, uh, Chris Fig from Elite MMA Agency, you know, all my coaches, all my sparring partners, clients, students, everyone that supported me. You're seeing the, the bag and tag, bag and tag is back. Do you know what I mean? So, March 20th, Friday. At the O2, watch me get it in the bag. Ooh. You did absolutely amazing there. Did you have an auto cue going on? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I'm literally, uh, this energy, uh, it's a new sense of energy. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm I just feeling good. I can believe it, I love it. I'm feeling good. And you're going to see, see, see this and I can't wait to perform. So please, please don't blink. I'm excited to watch you make a statement. Thank you. Thanks so <laughs> much, Nathan. Thank you very much. I'll see you later, yeah? See ya. Thank you, everyone, for watching.